Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the fifth Thursday of Easter, and the church today also remembers St. Ansfried of Utrecht. St. Ansfried was born in the year 990, well, he became Bishop of Utrecht in 995, and he was originally, in 961, a sword bearer for Otto I, and he became very well known in the court of the king and eventually he gained enough renown that they asked him to become bishop of Utrecht. Now he was not yet ordained and because he had taken up arms he didn't see himself as worthy but the emperor Otto prevailed and so he was ordained and installed a bishop of Utrecht in the same ceremony and that was in 995 and as he ruled Utrecht, he was known as a very holy bishop who tried, who founded uh, an abbey. And in 1006, he founded the Abbey of Haugenberg under the patronage of St. Michael, the archangel. Through the end of his life, he became increasingly weakened through fasting and retired as a monk at the abbey, caring for the sick, although he was almost blind. So St. Ansfried, for your noble work in promoting the faith in Utrecht, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior found on page 66 if you're following along. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do an act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next few days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear my voice, Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Come, says my heart. Seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Alleluia. Do not hide your face from me. Do not repel your servant in anger. You are my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, God my Savior. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you promised that when we seek you with all of our heart, we will find you. 
give us such a total desire for you that we will not cease our search until you show us your salvation and reveal your presence. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, <coughs> My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them. For by faith, he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, as is written, After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David, from its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in, in every town as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved, he governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips, so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. Complete. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as promised yesterday, we have the conclusion of the debate as to whether the Gentiles needed to be circumcised. As the disciples gathered together and discussed the situation, they had much debate. <coughs> Excuse me. And Peter gave a beautiful accounting of how God worked among the Gentiles and converted them into Jesus Christ, following him. So Paul and Barnabas did 
a very good job in allowing the Lord to work through them. And so they decided not to put the burden of circumcision on the Gentiles, but they did have to follow the laws of avoiding idols, unlawful marriages, meat of strangled animals, and blood. A couple of purification laws. Because they cared for the people and wanted them to be healthy and happy. So, what does that say to us today? Well, we need to listen to the leaders of our church who have been ordained in valid apostolic succession and who are successors to these 12 apostles that were here in Acts. Because they interpret the laws for us based on sacred scripture and tradition, just as the disciples did here. And then our gospel, very short today, only three verses. It's about love. The love of God. And as he says something very profound. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. The love comes from the Father to the Son out to us. Just as God's love and Christ's love comes into us and we flow it out to others. Then he says, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Now, Jesus says that the way we show our love for God the way he shows his love for his father is by willingly choosing to keep his commandments. Just so we show our love for God, our love for Jesus, by keeping his commandments. We do that, we choose to do that willingly because we know we have free will and we can break them if we want. But if we choose to do that, we are choosing not to love God, not to love Jesus Christ. So what do we choose? What do we choose? Do we choose to love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and being, and our neighbor as ourselves? That, those are the two commandments that Jesus gave us, boiling everything down into that. Or, or, do we choose not to? Do we choose to love something else? Do we choose to make ourselves our own God or someone else a God? Or something else a God? If we do that, then we don't love God. We can do that. It is up to us. But why would we? If we want to gain eternal life in Christ, let us always choose to love him and show him that love by following his commandments. All of them, not picking and choosing, all of them as best as we can, and if we fail, we get up again, we apologize to God, we apologize to those we have offended, we seek his forgiveness and absolution in the church, and move forward every day, every single day. So, my brothers and sisters, do we choose to love God by following his commandments? In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now stand and turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. With hearts full of faith, we turn to God our Father and offer Him the sacrifice of our prayers. Our response is Alleluia. For the church, that her guidance will strengthen and renew all on the path of deeper discipleship, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all government leaders, that they make their decisions in light of the truth and justice that embody God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For the sick and the suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list, that they may not lose heart, but be renewed in faith and trust in the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all the needs and intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Alleluia. For all those who have passed on from this life and those who will die today, that they may be granted eternal life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Alleluia. God of joy, you enliven our Easter faith as we continue to live in communion with your Son, who calls us to eternal glory in your kingdom. We ask all these things spoken and unspoken through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. <coughs> Lord our God, sanctify these gifts and purify our hearts, placing our needs before you. May we walk in the light of your countenance. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice of the Mass continues with the Eucharistic Prayer 2, which is found on page 82 if you're following along. We have thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you are well pleased. 
who sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb, there he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection, he took bread. He gave you thanks and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. like manner, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Together, calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. To him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, <coughs> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. We say together the first communion prayer found on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I'll take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Blood of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. And since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring healing and strength now and forever. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed Him. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, You are the Word of God, fully known of a mystery hidden for the ages, the cornerstone of our salvation, now revealed in the Holy Eucharist we have shared. Through Your holy resurrection, build us into a living temple to contain the glory of God. For You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope, where there's darkness, light, and where there's sadness, joy. O oh, my master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood is to understand, to be loved is to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for Holy Mass today. I pray that you can join us on Saturday evening at 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time for our Vigil Mass, or on Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time for the Mass for the sixth Sunday of Easter. I pray that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in a state of grace. Fight evil wherever you find it and spread joy wherever you go. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name. Sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand. As a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God.